just have to be, you know, Christianity. It can be any kind of religion. A lot of it's really about control and authoritarianism and, and creating like a schism between individuals and parts of themselves. Yeah. And, and, and a, an entity saying, we're going to do the thinking for you and we're the mm. arbiters of right and wrong and, and we're the moralistic authority. I think that's one of the big things. And then out of that, you have things like controlling people's sexuality, controlling genders, um, elevating you know men above women, saying that children have to be unquestionably obedient. All of those things come from the idea, the authoritarian and, and all those groups, they all share that in different ways, but it's about control, it's about power, mm. and it's about fear. Um, just because just, Hey, y'all. Welcome to FTS Fuck the System, a sexual liberation podcast. I'm here today with Ruben and Sherry, the fly duo and the co-founders of Sex Tech and Chill. Can y'all just give folks an overview of what Sex Tech and Chill is? Because I found y'all on Instagram and I feel like the information is phenomenal every week. And now y'all added the memes and I love a good meme, but... <laughs> Um, Sherry, <laughs> would you mind just giving us an overview of what um, Sex Tech and Chill is? Yeah, Sex Tech and Chill basically is just, it. it's a place for self-discovery and sexual liberation. And it's it came from our own personal journey and all the work that we've been doing. And like Ruben was talking with you earlier about the stuff we've been curating for years and years, we just said it's time for us to start sharing it with other people and start helping other people because the more you get into it you start hearing other people's experiences that we aren't the only ones that have gone through this kind of shit and people who there is even people who don't realize that they're going through and dealing with purity culture and dealing with a lot of the messed up teachings that we have in in especially in this country around sex and sexuality so we just yeah. we figured it was time to share what we've been learning <laughs> even though we're not fully like healed and out of this whole process ourselves we're still in it we're still very much in it and I think that's kind of a, a it's a gift secret sauces too yeah yeah so like, we kind of we have understanding and empathy for what people are going through because we it, we're not so far removed from it and we're yeah. still in it ourselves and nobody really needs a perfect teacher. You know, like I think people sometimes want to put the folks that are giving them the good information on a pedestal, but it's like, look, I'm all human, just like you are all human. And I've had a human ass experience. Yes. <laughs> so that's so also the best though, because right. that, that's what I appreciate the most. I do too. People's like real experiences and like the when they're honest about the realities of what it actually takes to get get free liberation to like get mm -hmm. free from this because it's not a straight path it's not it's messy it's very messy yeah but it's well, very worth it one thing I wanted to ask you I like to start with this question but if I think it's especially relevant when you talk about moving through the culture of a religious cult and purity culture being so deeply ingrained in like this deference-based control what do you love most about you? Like when you're in that recovery and liberation journey, you find that love for yourself again, for both of you, anyone can start. You want to start? Sure. So <laughs> I, I have to admit like a little while ago, we were watching a couple of your podcast episodes. We were like really taken by the one with Marla and I forget the other dude with the fro. Um, He's biracial black man yep i mm -hmm. really appreciated both of them matthew oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you i'm like i feel so bad i can't remember his name um but we know marla for a minute and really appreciate a lot of what she was saying um and, and when you asked that question i was i was thinking to myself i'm like what would i think what would what would i say about myself and so so we were kind of asking each other questions i think for me um when i look at myself i think about the ability to hang in there and to mm. like be determined and not to quit regardless of what I'm confronted up against. On the other side, like my values mean a lot. Like I care a lot about people. I want me to be free, but I don't want to leave anybody behind. Yes. I think like um, when I read about, 
I, I talk about it all the time probably, but when I read uh, the Asada Shakur, um, uh, her autobiography, yeah. and then when I heard some interviews with Audre Lord, those things like stuck with me where it's like, I think the one with Asada was really dope because of like, she was a liberation fighter, right? She's yeah. part of the deep end. She got, you know, fucked up by, by the powers of the state and the yeah. system. But she didn't like the part with her in the courthouse. I can't remember the dude's name. I think it was Kenyatta, but I can't remember his name. But like literally how they conceived their baby. Like it felt like like a dope hood flick. Yeah. Like I was like, <laughs> I was it just I can't I can't even explain. I love the fact that you could have this powerful story and then you still got these dope erotic scenes going on <laughs> in the middle of a courthouse. I'm like, for real, for real. Like if if I could be a tenth of her. <laughs> Then that's doing like some you shit. Fight the fine fight. Yeah. And still enjoy yourself. Yes, that's exactly. Right. That's like, right. So, so I feel like that's that that's uh, my ethics, my ability to just push and and work really hard at trying to make things better, and the way I care about just liber liberation and trying to be involved in the work the best that I can. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. What oh, you're you? welcome. I think when I was thinking about the question the first thing that came to mind for me is that I feel like I'm a good mom and I did a lot of the work that it takes to overcome a lot of the generational stuff that, yeah. you know, from my own family. And I feel like what I've taught my kid, I hope that, you know, like, I hope, I feel like we're good friends and I'm a good mom and I've helped him to myself to overcome stuff so that I can be a better parent. And I think that should they have kids one day that they'll be a better parent than even I was. And uh. I think that's progress. And I feel like that's, that's like a big win for me because that was really challenging when we first, you know, knew we were going to have a child. It's you worry about being the, the bad things that mm -hmm. you were raised around mm -hmm. and putting in the work to overcome those things and actually doing it and seeing the results is pretty Yes. <laughs> I love that because so many people underestimate how liberation can happen in a family unit just by the decisions you make in your parenting. How old are your kids? We have one, they're 27. And I have one that I'm carrying right now and a four-year-old, right? So I'm oh, definitely wow. in this journey with you <laughs> thinking about like, how do I raise a beautiful black boy so that he understands himself as worthy in all ways and is joyful as a function of liberation, right? Like, so I, I really appreciate you saying that. People yes. think it has to be like this big platform work. And sometimes it's like, the way I love the person that I brought into this world. It makes better by them than what you had, you know? Like, yes. cause I, I hate the mentality like, well, that's what, how I was raised. That's what I'm gonna do. Like, no. That's how you were raised. So you need to like lock it in that you're not going to do that. Because you know it was kids. messed up. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and I love looking at them as an adult and be like, wow, like I wish I was mm -hmm. like that when I was their age. And yes. I'm like, I had something to do with that. Yeah, like, that exactly. makes me feel good, you know? <laughs> yes. That is a dope feeling. Oh my gosh. Okay. So getting into the sexual liberation specifics. How do you define good sex? And anybody can take it. You want the first one? Sure, I'll take it. I define good sex. First and foremost, for me, it's about connection. Like I have to be connected to my partner and feel that they're connected to me. Like, be like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. if I'm not connected and I don't feel connection, the other, the rest of it is not going to be that great. But if we're in tune with each other and I feel like we can like, put the world aside for a few minutes and en enjoy ourselves. That's first and foremost. Second, foreplay and building up the mood and the eroticism, yes. and the, like the want for it. And then just like releasing all that pent up energy with your partner. <laughs> the It's the build up for me, girl. Yes. Listen, <laughs> like that. Yeah. And and sometimes it's words, sometimes it's touch, sometimes it's, all, there's so many things that it can be, but you're so right. Like building up that desire for it, that want for it makes a huge difference in good sex for me too. What about for Absolutely. you, Ruben? For me, like, I'm going to just like uh, piggyback off of yours <laughs> and say yours as a prerequisite. <laughs> And then like the eroticism is huge. I, I'm like, like the three things, tactile, visual, and auditory. Mm, like mm -hmm. I like all of that. I like a long foreplay. 
get super, super turned on and then stretch it out and edge it as long as we can. And I, I like like probably like make those sessions, stretch them out as long as you can. <laughs> but that's, you don't know when there's going to be the time again. So you might yeah, as well enjoy exactly. and savor it. <laughs> Exactly. Every time has to be a great time. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm a little bit too much with that, where I'm like, but, but, but overall, I like that's yeah. that's my thing. That's what I appreciate. But the connection and the intimacy is like is really huge. Like, because for me, like having that makes the other part of it just that much better. But I like to like just like get involved and talk and just like run with it. Go yeah. go to places you haven't gone before and just like have fun with it. And does for you to the connection help you to learn where you can go next? Or is it that intimacy that creates the good soil for the 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 level of sex or the quality of sex that you want? I think so. I think part of it was figuring out myself first mm, and being mm-hmm. okay with it. Because like there was a lot of things I had a hard time feeling okay about about myself uh, okay. with sex. So I had to get okay with that. And then outside of like, you know, having sex in the bedroom, Sherry and I had to like develop new understandings with each other and yes. get like on the same page in that way. And then also like fight a lot of the stigma that we were dealing with in shame. Once we got through that point, then like you say, the intimacy made everything a lot better, but it took a lot of work way outside of the bedroom to get to that point. And mm-hmm. then once you get to that point, it's like, yeah, it's really dope. It makes it a lot easier to like explore too. Um, and like try out new things and just talk to each other more openly too. Yeah. Um, Cause we can talk way more openly now than in the past. I think I was carrying a lot of shame before where it was hard to talk about a lot of stuff. And, you know, I had a, a lot of unnecessary guilt and yeah. a lot of stuff that a lot of people coming out of various, you know, religions and theologies often seem to have nowadays. I was carrying a lot of that same stuff. So working through a lot of that helped tremendously. Mm-hmm. What was some of the things that helped inform your definitions of good sex so you talked about the work you did were the things that you read that stand out so you talked about Asada and Audre Lorde um I don't know if for you Sherry or things that you watched or people that you talked to that was like I'm changing like you know this definition used to be one thing and now it's a different thing has it changed over time yeah definitely um I would say back back in the day I would have defined good sex as just sex that felt really good yeah. Um. And today it's, it's totally different because I know what good sex actually feels mm-hmm. like and what it's a lot more than just good, the the act being really good, you know? Yeah. And yeah, a lot of the like learning part in the work, we've learned so much from people like you and like a lot of this other sex educators and experts reading books like The God Virus and mm-hmm. Sex and God and Mating in Captivity and Ooh, Sex at Dawn, I think. Yeah, one of those. like all of those were pre ethical slut for me. And they like, it was needed for me. Like it was so necessary for me to co- the connection or the disconnection of like the God, the God part of it and religion with yeah. sex and sexuality and just being human. So and that totally like flipped the switch in my brain. And then I could be receptive to so much more because mm-hmm. I was able to separate the religious aspect of it. Ah, okay. So those, are, I love those books. Thank you so much for sharing. So I always like people to have little tidbits that they can go to if they haven't already read those like foundational texts yet. Um, And then the engagement with those, not like the lessons that they teach. So it's like, how do you practice? You know, cause it's like, you can learn something. This, this is just basic sight you can learn something but that has nothing to do with how your behavior is going to (laughs) change like Mm -hmm. so then you got to practice all the stuff you learn and both of y'all talk about it being a journey so then were there things there strategies you use it's like oh i read this dope thing in sex at dawn or i read this dope thing in ethical slut or audrey lord said this what are we gonna do with that information (laughs) oh that's a good question one of the things that we did was like so there's things that we read and do independently of each other, but then we were making it a practice to like, we'd choose a book together um, mm. and then read it at night. So like we'd be in bed and we'd like read anywhere from like five minutes to like an hour 
Um, we try to make it around like 15 minutes, but you know, sometimes you go way deeper than you wanted to or mm -hmm. you intended you to. Back, you fall asleep in two minutes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's so funny too that you say that too, because one of the books, um, I've read so many parts of it so many times because she kept falling asleep. Like, so then the next night I'd have like, I'd have three bookmarks. One where I, I thought she fell asleep and I could hear her breathing because different. She stops reading, I'm awake. <laughs> then she wakes up. So I'll just keep reading. And then I'll be like, oh shoot, this is really good. I don't want to forget where I'm at. So I have a second bookmark for myself. But we did a lot it. of that. So all those books we actually read together and independently as well. Ooh. Um. So we do like a lot of the books reading together. And then we also make it a habit like during the day, usually in the morning, like when we're making breakfast and stuff like that, we talk about a lot of what we've been learning and everything. Because like at night, like we kind of got to find a balance because if you're talking about it at night while we're in bed, yeah. you're never going to sleep. And those 4 a.m. mornings are great conversations, but they suck the next day. Cause they I'm hit totally like, different not... when you cross 40, boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just not, I'm not down for that if I don't have to be. It's, it's too hard on my body. So we try to talk about it the next day. And like, that's been really nice. And, and then, then it kind of start... metabolizes while you're asleep and then new ideas start to form in there. Oh, absolutely. You know, we listen to a lot of podcasts, talk about them. Like, li like listening to one podcast episode together can take us like hours on end. Yeah. Like just because we stop them, we have to listen to it multiple <laughs> sessions. Yeah, we have in conversation about everything they're saying. We went on a road trip. It was like a five hour road trip. We listened to an audio book the whole way and talked the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, like for, for us who like love music, that was a big deal. A big, yeah, exactly. Because it's like usually road trips are like, Put the you know you got beat going you just like listen in these in the zone. So what's your favorite sex it? song? Because okay, if you love music, I know you got a song that's like this is the one. If it it just does something. Oh, I got for a you. bunch. No, you got to <laughs> just choose. You got to just choose one. Oh, uh, <laughs> shit. Um, the one that came to mind was what we were saying this morning. Only Nicki Minaj. Oh, mine's. Mm -hmm. What's what? the name of the one I like with Tayana Taylor and? Oh shit, that's a really good one. I kind of want to take that one. No, you can't have it. <laughs> you I say what you what said. The name of it is. I can look Super it up. Super sensual. Mm, okay. But so we squeeze in like podcasts and books wherever we can, and it's it's hard because we talk about them so much. So they yeah. a short thing can be a very long thing for us, but it's the talking that actually helps us to process together. And then we do a lot of like some. I was. Something came up on Instagram recently and somebody was saying that watching TV together is like the lowest form of intimacy. I and I was like, I saw they've never that. Really, they've never watched <laughs> we watched Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. TV, movies, documentaries, docu-series that have changed our yes. freaking life and yeah. changed our relationship for the better. And that's like, that's what the playlists are on Sex, Tech, and Chill, the website. Those are things that like, real literally have changed our life <laughs> well, like it's tv yes some of it's like educational some of it's like you know edutainment and mixed in between mm -hmm. and then others is just pure entertainment i mean we've done like one funny example of the work is like we have a show that we watch that the topic of the show is particularly triggering for me for whatever reason from mm -hmm. my past so like it's a therapy thing for us to sit and watch it together um, and we'll like pause and like watch a scene and then pause and like talk about it talk through it nice. so, and then enjoy the next scene and then t pause and talk about it and talk through it like one of the times we did that we had the best sex after <laughs> like it should have been like what would have normally been if we just sat down and watched it would have been mm -hmm. like triggering as fuck and like a blowout fight kind of situation mm -hmm. ended up being instead like the best sex ever yeah. because Ooh. he was so receptive and like so like supportive of me and like I'm like I want to do this can we try this as therapy can we try this weird thing that sounds crazy but I think it'll work for me and he was totally on board and tried to be super supportive through the whole thing and and now it's like one of our favorite shows we're still going. Are you not going to say the show? Because I just feel like I need no, to know. No, the we can't. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write about it one day. Okay. Okay. Like, okay one day okay. I'm going to write about the whole experience. But like okay. right now, it's we're still, it's still a little bit 
like more therapy than it is pure entertainment for us. Gotcha. So. But this is beautiful because you kind of you're kind of talking about okay, so my psychology head is mm-hmm. on. You're kind of talking about exposure therapy, right? Where something yeah. is triggering and it's like a little bit, but then you have a safe space that you can process it with and breathe with in your in your partner. And then you can get a little bit more and then kind of process it. And the fact that it ended up in good sex is amazing because then it's like we benefited from the intimacy we created in this healing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we call the practice and like making. Doing the work. Yeah. Doing the work. A practice. And it's just, it's a regular thing because these are things that are long ingrained in our Mm -hmm. brains. And for me, like in my body, like my brain is in one place and my body is oftentimes in another place and I need my body to like hurry up and catch up. So you have to like, sometimes you have to force it to do the work to get, to realize that it's in a safe place so that you can move on and have better. And that's like, that's one example of how we do the work and what practice looks like for us. Mm, I love that so much because you gave us really two things, the being in the car trips, right? And so, or reading books together at night um three and watching shows <laughs> right <laughs> but having that same process with all of them where it's like listen a little bit talk a little bit listen a little bit talk a little bit so you're not just like zoning out while you're listening to it there's some process work that's the healing work that y'all are doing and this is going to really help some folks so i really appreciate y'all sharing that because it's it's not just about like knowing things and being smart it's about like how do i use this to your point earlier ruben to facilitate liberation for myself yep. and for the people who get to benefit from hearing what I'm doing. Absolutely. Jur- and if I could add a couple of mm-hmm. things to Please journaling do. has been huge. Ooh, and like, okay. like Sherry does it a little different than I do. I, I just use one of my devices and I create notes and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that has been massive to help me better process my own like thinking and thoughts yeah. and feelings. And it has been a, a real game changer. Um, and people think you just noted, like it could just be a note on your phone or something. People think all of these things need to be like, I got to do it for an hour or two hours for it to work. And sometimes, like you said, you read for five minutes and that's enough or listen to something for five minutes or write a few words down even. And it's those small steps that really make it one, not so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And then two, something that people feel like. I'm seeing the gains of this and it didn't feel like it was that much that I did. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Especially for me, like with, with helping with not disassociating from mm. stress and stuff, like just helping me be more present in what I'm feeling in the moment yeah. and just in like, even just sitting down and just starting to write and just whatever comes out, comes out. Um, Because all it is, is just to help me just mentally wise to just kind of like facilitate better connections and, how I think, be more clear on what's going on inside of my head. And then the, my goal for it is for it to translate into better communication with Sherry and, yeah. and like, and do a better job when we have conflict or when challenges come up to be a better partner and to do better on my side of the relationship equation. Mm-hmm. I love that. You found the song too, that it's called Morning. Yeah. Tayana Taylor and Kalani. Ooh. So good. Okay. I kind of want to take that one. Okay, also, well, you can, you can share it, but too, Sherry like, said it, but you can share it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I whatever. If you want me to play it, I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna. Oh no, don't off. play it because I'm gonna yeah, put yeah. it. In, I'm gonna put the link in the bio for okay, the show word. notes. Yeah, so people can click right on and go to on YouTube. Okay, yeah, so shifting gears a little bit, you 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 knocked at some of this before we started recording, so I want to get into it again. What intersecting systems of oppression fuck up good sex and how? Because you know it's my favorite. Take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism, um, religiosity, white supremacy, patriarchy. Those are like the four things. If we could deal with those, and then how mm. they intersect with government, the four authoritarianism. Yes. Those things. If, if people were more aware of how that stuff, how those systems interact, how they exist on their own, and then the different ways in which they their tentacles go into our lives and our culture. If people have more awareness and more understanding of that, I think we could all free ourselves mm. and then do the work of freeing each other and do the work of putting those things back in proper positions so that they don't have 
the overarching level of control and influence that they're allowed to have. Break it down for us about how they operate. Cause though, whew, look, those are some bangers. Now we know, like, right. how do you see them operating? What, what, what are some of the ways that people can pick up on like, Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Well, religiosity and, 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 and that doesn't, it doesn't even just have to be, you know, Christianity. It can be any kind of religion. A lot of, it's really about control and authoritarianism and, and, creating like a schism between individuals and parts of themselves yeah and and, and a, an entity saying we're going to do the thinking for you and we're the mm. arbiters of right and wrong and and we're the moralistic authority i think that's one of the big things and then out of that you have things like controlling people's sexuality controlling genders um elevating you know men above women saying that children have to be unquestioningly obedient all of those things come from the idea, the authoritarian, and, and all those groups, they all share that in different ways, but it's about control, it's about power, mm. and it's about fear. Um, just because, just like white supremacy is a much as much about capitalism and social hierarchy for control yeah. and power, it's also about fear. Like, yes. Black people have been subjugated, but part of why that subjugation is easy to, to continue generationally is because the fear is there of us. We've been vilified, criminalized, pathologized, demonized. So it's, it's getting people to understand like the entity that's doing this, what is their gain? How are you impacted? And then how can you start doing things operate around that? I think that's why I'm really like, I think it's, there's value in, in learning from underground uh, economies, underground ways yeah. of doing things, because they're often really expert of subverting um, those type of entities and being able to thrive yeah. or at least operate outside of their, their the rigid structures. And I think there's a lot we can learn from them. And I'm talking all the underground economies, like, mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's a lot of them. And I, tr I mean, I'm no expert, but I've tried to like, pay attention and learn the things I think are of value, because I think there's truth in like, um the master's house they're not going to give you the tools to dismantle their house yeah. right so let's look at the the organizations or the groups the end of these individuals who have found their way to freedom and they operate mm. outside of those paradigms and then let's take some let's learn from them get some of those tools because the master's not going to get and i i don't like that term either yeah. i'm gonna be real with mm -hmm. you like even me saying that i'm cringing inside <laughs> <laughs> but i can't think of another word right right this moment but yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, th I love those examples though, because sometimes we operate in that water, like we swim in that water so often that it's like, this is just light. This is just normal. And then when you find yourself transgressing it, whether intentionally or unintentionally, you realize, oh, there's so many other ways to be. <laughs> why, why did I not learn any of this? And then you realize there are systems in place to prevent us from learning these things. And where do you find the other knowledge? In subversive cultures, for sure. What That's about what for you, Sherry? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, same thing. For me, the big, the biggest thing is just is purity culture mm -hmm. because it impacts so much of our daily lives. And like Ruben was saying, whether you you grew up a religious or not, it's part of our culture. Yep. So it impacts us and it's it's in our laws. And that's why we share like the sex in the news on sex tech and chill because I mean so many times we don't understand why things are the way they are. And like when law we don't even know half the time. I didn't know before all this like half the laws that are being made and who they're impacting and how they impact the rest of us. Yep. So these are important things for us to know because that's all purity culture. It all comes from the same place, whether it's directly from religion or you're part of religion or not, it impacts you because of the culture that we're all, we all share. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's the biggest thing for me. And I, I mean, I happen to come from the religious bullshit. So mm. I have a lot of unlearning to do and, and I'm recognize it now in the culture and the society that we're part of because when we were part of the the organization that we grew up in like we were in the world but not part of the world you know that whole y'all jehovah's witnesses yes yeah when you said in the world look, my grandma's a jehovah's witness so i already knew exactly you were, where wait, you were. Yeah. as soon as you said that i was like in, in the world, world but not part of the world <laughs> yes and, and it's the quite world. literal like we we walk the it same is, ground yes. But we're not. Yes, we, you're, we don't know what's going on out there to to an extent. 
And then when you leave and you realize, oh my God, y'all are fucked up too. <laughs> y'all have a lot of the same, the same like religious purity culture teachings. Yes. You thought it was had. free outside. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for real. Exactly. And we're like, oh man, there's another whole kind of work we got to do out here. <laughs> yeah. I was reading that book, Boy Slut, in this, uh, over the springtime. How was it? It was it was interesting. There was okay. definitely some stuff worth reading in there. Okay. Um, some stuff didn't necessarily connect in the same way for me, but there were parts that really definitely resonated. The part where he talked about how he grew up in a, in a um, what do you call it, a sex positive progressive home, right? But because of some of the experiences that he had, like not within his family of origin, yep. um, but also the culture, the wider religious culture, he had a lot of that ingrained in him and hadn't even yeah. fully um, realized it until he became like an adult. And then he had to do the work to mm -hmm. unlearn a lot of that. So this is a person not raised within one of these restrictive groups like we were still dealing with a lot of the same stuff. And, he, and I was appreciative. He was pointing a lot of that out as well. Like, you know, if, if you grow up in any of these Western cultures, I mean, the U.S. being like pretty fucking yeah. on the extreme side compared to from what I've learned of other cultures. But right. you still have that influence that you got to kind of like come to grips with. I think that's where liberation is good, too, because it makes it a lot easier. Like if you don't have like the knowledge, mm. it's everything's opaque. Once you have the knowledge, it's kind of like. You can like see through the the opacity and you can like spot things and you're a lot more like in tune and understanding. Oh, so so the person on the stage here is saying this, trying to get people to put this legislation out. But here's the real reason. Even there's, Ooh. you know, they're saying COSA is to protect children, but actually COSA is being used by NCOS E because they're anti-porn because they come out of media, yes. media, me, morality and media, which comes out of the what is it, Billy Graham, or one of those churches which comes out of the Southern Convention, which comes out of the Southern Conference, which comes out of, they didn't want Black people to have full equality. So if you read the book of White Evangelical Christian Racism, I think it's called. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that one is fire. Like, so fire. I can look and get the name. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> going bananas. I was like, every time she said a word, I'm like, did you hear that, Cherry? Yes, fire, let me, okay, fire, definitely, fire. Give, <laughs> definitely give me the name of that one because all of these good resources y'all are naming, I'm putting in the show notes so people can be connected to them like, ah, listen and learn some more. I love a good audible. So I can have a, like an hour and some change commute and listen, my Audible is always going with some good book recommendations people give me. That's why, that's a part of the reason why I do this because I'm like, what y'all listening to? <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that for you right now, like Thank while y'all talking, because I I have it on here. I just I have a bigger library than I realized. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, okay. So you talked about capitalism and white supremacist culture and um, patriarchy and religiosity slash purity culture and how they all kind of operate together to dominate, to control to create fear that makes it easier to dominate and control. Because when you feel afraid, you're more amenable to change, especially yep. if the things you fear feel so much bigger than you. So when you get to, when you become insightful about these things, like when you, you listen and you learn, um, you get to create then your own definition of sexual liberation outside of those. And then I imagine even that evolves over time. So what does sexual liberation look like to you if if it exists? To me, it's freedom from living by other people's standards of morality and mm. mostly that, yeah. And just feeling free from shame and yeah, the other others beliefs and having your own like knowing what you want and what feels right for you and being okay with that, regardless of what it means to other people. I think every yeah. one of us deserves that freedom. Getting a, So deprogramming, divesting from shame, and then your decisions and your behaviors coming out of that place where that's not governing you. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, Thanks for sharing cool. that. Yeah, shame is... Shame is evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little <laughs> For real. 
I don't have to share what you said, but like just basically autonomy for me from mm -hmm. these systems and being able to make your own choices, not have other people be able to dictate what you can and cannot do. And then knowing that you've got the choice to to make choices and mm -hmm. then having the freedom and the understanding to be able to follow through on them. Like even for us, like we made the choice, like we're making our marriage anew based on where we are like in this present moment of time and what we were taught we were allowed to be as like what we were taught marriage was allowed to be whatever those mm -hmm. confines and box are that's literally just one human's interpretation like we don't have to live by that like yes. literally yeah, like that's all part of yeah. it. what makes a good <laughs> wife what makes a loyal wife like yes. being too sexual is like is that really a bad thing especially when you're spouse is telling you they want you to be that way but in your head you're still like but no that's not a good way mm, you know that mm -hmm. kind of bullshit like that just gets in the way even when your brain and your partner are telling you otherwise it's still there it's still lying to you and telling you shit that's not real that freedom from that thought and those feelings mm. that's true liberation and i cannot wait for it <laughs> yes it's on its word. way and it's on practice. our way yes yes, <laughs> yes so when you think about those two ideas together so freedom from shame and empowerment through autonomy it's a beautiful combination of the the, the work that you get to do together what you get to share with the world but also what you get to practice with one another and I just I love that I think that's a beautiful a beautiful representation of sexual liberation from a couple perspective. How long have y'all been in relationship, whether it's married or just partnered before? Like, and at what point in the journey of that marriage or that relationship were you like, you know what? We get to define marriage for ourselves. <laughs> that's a that's yeah, that's go for it. Well, so we've been married 27. We got married in 95, so it's 27 wow. years, wow. coming up on 28. But it was around 2012. We've we've had like, we're starting to call it, we've had many seasons or many eras or many marriages within our yes. marriage. Yes, yes. Um, we just were newly married, you know. Yeah, yes. we're, like, yeah we're, new, like, <laughs> we're newly so, once again. <laughs> yeah, we're newly once again. So like in 2000, somewhere between 2018 and 2019, we started like this process in a whole new way, mm. which was magic for us it was incredible and then as well, we can i pause you just oh, for a word, second yeah. because we didn't escape the religious group until our mid-30s mm -hmm. so that was we were together like 15 more than 15 17 yeah. 18 years Something before okay. we got out of there so we've only we've only been out for like 11 12 years yeah and that's where like like that's kind of where we had a a restart again at that point mm -hmm. but you don't fully know that what you don't know so as you learn it yeah now we're like we're like wide awake and fully aware of all the possibilities and now it's more so of a, a um figuring out what our individual selves have learned about ourselves mm -hmm. and then what that means for our relationship moving forward what kind of relationship do we want to build based on who who we are today and what we know of ourselves yeah. now that we've actually gotten to really get to know ourselves for the first time in our life yeah mm -hmm. yeah what you said sorry to interrupt no no no, <laughs> no I, that was eloquent as fuck so i appreciate the way you said that yeah i mean that's that's we've had that and we've had multiple of that each time like you were like sherry was saying like we had it for us getting out of the group then we had and we it was more focused on like deconstruction and then rebuilding ourselves as humans outside yes. of like the sexuality stuff just like as humans and then as a couple and then we made massive progress but then we keep we hit these head walls where we've come up against the traumas from the religious experiences for me there's also traumas from race experiences and some family of origin stuff and then so we have to do you know a big lift to get up to a point where we can move beyond that. And then like, so that's kind of like, we have that and it like yeah. those, and it, I feel like every time it happens, it's kind of like the edge of an know. era and then you get into a new era. Yeah, mm. because we hit like, we hit a wall of like, something has to change. Yeah. Are we gonna 
this is it or are we trying are we still moving forward and then when we move forward we're like wow this is even better than mm. than before and every time we hit a wall and we like want to give up but we push forward it gets better and yeah. so that's why kind of for us it feels new feels brand new again um and i was going to say too that i brought up the religious the religion too because prior to leaving there we didn't grow we didn't make progress we didn't do anything yeah. because we were still under their laws their yep. everything and we just lived according to what we were told and what we were supposed to do even though it caused us a world of conflict mm. within our relationship we didn't do anything about it even though we wanted to because we didn't know how to and we didn't know that we could yeah so it was after leaving that it took a little bit of time to realize that oh we can change these things in our life now <laughs> oh. and then what does that actually look like and then been doing all the work that we've been talking about to actually make those changes and figure out what we want those to look like yeah. too is once you yeah. realize like yeah. how like literally there's no limits there's no yeah. anything but now you got to figure out what are the possibilities what does that look like i so feel like you get to everybody. that part right there that you just named so what you described is this beautiful journey of so excommunication slash leaving right <laughs> Yep. A little, little bit of both happening there. Yep. And then you have to deconstruct all the stuff that's going on. But a lot of people stop at deconstruction and feel so much grief and despair because they have no idea that that radical imagination needs to come in and build something new. Yep. Right. And so then you're talking about building something new, seeing how that something new works. Oh, our foundation, we need to add some more things to that before we build some more. And, you know, and that, so that part of the liberation journey, a lot of us don't get to learn about that. We get to learn about, let's burn this shit down. And then it's like, okay, it's burnt now. <laughs> yeah. What's next? I'm you so envious. Too. Of so what are you going to do? Burn it down. <laughs> I am envious of people who can burn it down though. Like this one, he could burn it all the fuck down. But you got to like, burn some up. stuff, but we you got to build. It down brick by brick. <laughs> Oh, that's a good, that's a good thing too, right? So you're talking about the approaches to dismantling. Yeah. Can we be ba like, we balance each why, other, which is but good But it's too. also why we also have conflict because I'm like, take it down one at a time. I need to make sure this is okay. He's like, <laughs> burn it the fuck down. I want nothing to do with it. So we have to like, we have to get on the same page. We're constantly like going like this to try and like, we're on the same page, right? Like we're on, the, we're trying to get to the same thing, even though we have slightly different approaches to getting there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dang, well, we that's so good. Future, yeah. And the future looks beautiful. And we're trying, we're, we're on the same path to getting there. <laughs> You're sharing the, the radical imagination piece where it's like, this is what we want to build together, but those strategies to get there to what needs to be unearthed before you get there can look a little different, but you yeah. know where you're going. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think too, like we realized like, oh, cause you know, like growing up, you go, everyone's got the people they look to who are these, like, at least from my perspective, like these big looming, looming, like figures, luminaries in your mind that you like look to as like, wow, I'd love to be like that person one day or have their impact yeah. or whatever. But it was, I don't know if it was, I think it was when I was learning about um, Bobby Seale and, um, Malcolm and a few other people and one of the things they talked about was like you've got to actually have some some knowledge before yes. you can do anything of value because if, if everything you have is based on like you know just regurgitated mess that you actually don't even know the foundations of those thoughts and and, and beliefs you're not really doing anything positive you're just going to rebuild the same oppressive mm. structure that you're trying to get out of and that's where we spent a lot. Of, I mean, we're we're fortunate in that, like, we got our own business and all that, so we can absorb a lot of this into our time nice, in ways nice. that other folks aren't able to. Because we have invested a lot of time in just learning a lot of things. I mean, that's and like. It, can I interrupt you? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say that's actually how Sex, Tech, and Chill came to be about because we we wanted to kind of invest as much time as possible in our own mm -hmm. healing and growth so we flipped our agency to serve just um the sex positive and pleasure based yeah. brands and stuff like that and then sex tech and chill came about after during the pandemic we had a, a sex positive virtual event that went amazing we fell in love we wanted to do it yeah. again 
So Sex Second Show was going to be another virtual event. And we didn't get the um, financial support we needed to kind of do what we wanted to do initially. So it just kind of evolved into mm -hmm. what it is on its own because we weren't ready to like let it go. And now this is like we're the agency has like been doing it for 20 years and we loved it and we it was great but it feels like a new evolution even in our uh, professional world where we're like we're kind of we're going to keep doing this for a little while but we want to put all, move our energy over here but all of our energy is is around the destigmatization of pleasure and mm. the more that we can even make like our professional life around that area it helps us personally too so and then everything we do personally helps us professionally that's kind of how it all evolved. Like yeah. our business first went from like a, a traditional brand agency to serving pleasure brands to now we're doing sex tech and chill. It's just all part of part of the same evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that you said that too, because that was one of the big things was getting our getting our pursuits in parallel with each other. Yeah. Like okay. if we could get them um to work in unison, then everything benefits each everything else and because mm -hmm. we're also both disabled we both have chronic um immune issues mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. we have like we got to figure out like yeah, what so are our resources spoons. yeah what are you it's so many spoons mm -hmm. so in doing that we're like if we're doing the brand thing and it's not in line of this then we're like literally trying to split things that we don't have the the physical resources to do so let's just enjoin everything mm -hmm. and then move forward and then nothing is like there is no wasted energy it's like in our minds like it's the most efficient way to go at this like you bring your revenue in you bring your your passion in you bring your values yes. ethics what you see for the future how you want to like change the world like socially and culturally and all that all going in the same direction so everything you read benefits everything else everything you attend benefits everything everything you watch on tv like there is nothing that's not a wasted effort anymore. Mm. Um, and that, Everything's that's, intentional. Been feeling, yeah, exactly. That, that's that been a big part of it for us. Like that changed the game for us in a big, big ass way. Yep. <laughs> well, listen, this was a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much for making time to talk to me on FTS. And that is how you fuck the systems. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let me tell, ask... <laughs> You guys, where can folks find you? Where do you want to be found? Um, you can find us at sextechandchill.com, flymediaproductions.com is the brand agency, and on Instagram at sextechandchill. And then go to our LinkedIn too, because we're going to be doing fireside chats with mm -hmm. professionals in this space. Um, you can find us there at Sex Tech and Chill and Fly Duo as well. Like all. Yeah, I so, think so. That's the most important. You Those can, are okay. most important. We're all connected everywhere, so you'll find it. Find one, you'll find all of them. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you.